What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Create 0.3 and today we are going to be going over the Mechanical Mixer. Now last episode we set up these water wheels over here, got some nice rotational power generation going, and then put it to good use in this mechanical press. And if you guys recall, I said the mechanical press was pretty much the first machine you would want to set up because it allows the production of sheets, and those are super important when it comes to crafting a ton of different stuff in Create, so you're essentially going to need it to progress in any fashion that you want. Now, that's going to be perfectly shown in today's episode because the mechanical mixer, which is another extremely important thing to set up, is going to require five iron sheets that can only be made in the mechanical press. Now the mechanical mixer is so important and probably actually the second most important thing to set up because it allows the production of brass, which is another thing that is super important to a ton of different crafts that you are going to need to continue progressing and create. And you're able to make it by combining the two new ores that are added from create, which is going to be copper and zinc. Chances are, if you've done any form of mining, you've stumbled across these. We have plenty of it right here, and I really didn't do that much mining. So you should have plenty, and the setup's actually relatively easy, but we need to make sure we have it so we can continue progressing to even cooler stuff. Now, the mechanical mixer is going to be the one thing that we go over as the main point of today's video, but there's a ton of side stuff we get to cover, the main thing being how to use cogwheels because we are going to need to increase our rotational speed of our system to be able to run the mechanical mixer, and we're gonna do that using cog wheels, and it's something that's very important to learn when you're starting out in Create, because it's going to be integral to a lot of the different setups that you're gonna make in the future. So we're about to hop into the crafting portion of today's episode. For those of you who do not wanna stick around and watch it, no hard feelings, you can skip to the next section of the video where we actually start setting stuff up. And you can find a timestamp also in the description. But for those of you that want to stick around, right here is pretty much everything we need for today's episode. I always find it funny how much of a contrast this is to the Mechanism series with, you know, us needing some oak buttons and some planks and just some andesite alloy. That's pretty much all we need at the beginning of Create. So we're going to be making a bunch of cogwheels today. Some of them are going to be used simply as cogwheels. Some as actual crafts. And then we're going to be making the mechanical mixer, and the things that are needed to go along with that. So, the first thing we're going to make is going to be the mechanical mixer. And we actually have to make a whisk, and this is exactly where the iron sheets come in. So we're going to hop up here, and we're actually going to go make five iron sheets at the mechanical press. So, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Let it smash them. And there we go. So now we have our iron sheets. We're good to go with crafting the whisk. So we come back in here, craft this up, and then the rest of it is fairly simple. We just need to craft some andesite casing, and we're gonna be making uh, probably eight andesite casing today. That should be sufficient. So then we come back in and we can make the mechanical mixer. Now this is the main portion of the setup today, but this is not the only thing we need. We have two additional things that are needed to actually run the mechanical mixer. The first one being the basin. And this is just gonna be five andesite alloy, and we're gonna craft it like this. And this is going to go directly below the mechanical mixer. It's what you're going to drop the items in, and then the mixer is gonna come down, spin around in this thing, mix them up, and this is where the final item is going to come out. So you are going to need this. And then lastly, and this is new to create 0.3, so I'm pretty excited to try this out, but we are going to need to make the empty blaze burner. And this is going to allow us to capture a blaze put fuel into it and heat up the bottom of the basin so that we can actually mix stuff. In Create 0.2, you were able to, I believe, input something like either a blaze rod or a blaze powder in with the ores and you didn't need to heat the bottom. But in this one, instead, you're simply going to heat it with regular fuel and you're able to mix the ingots together, which makes sense because obviously you would want to melt them down before you would be able to mix them. So we're gonna need to make two iron sheets for this, which is what our two iron ingots that we have left are going to be used for. Probably should have made them all in one go, but we'll toss those down over here. Hear the satisfying clink again, grab the two iron sheets, and we can come back down and finish that off. So here we go. It's just gonna need two iron bars, two iron sheets, super easy to craft. The annoying part is going to be filling this thing up with an actual blaze. Now we're also going to be making two large cogwheels, and then we're gonna be making 
uh, a couple small cog wheels. We actually only need one large cog wheel and then one small cog wheel, but we're going to have extras because we are going to be making some additional gearboxes. I actually think we probably need a couple more, and then we are going to be making four gearboxes right here. So we should have pretty much everything. Uh, it seems I had a little bit extra in here since uh, I believe the andesite casing. Okay, yeah, I overcrafted the andesite casing. So we can dump this stuff back in. This is pretty much everything we are going to need for today's episode. But the first thing that we need to do now that we have all this good to go is head over into the nether and capture a blaze in the empty blaze burner. If we look at the uses for the empty blaze burner, you can see it's a mysterious conversion, not super mysterious. You basically just right click on a blaze and you are going to capture it and get the regular blaze burner, which you can see has a nice little blaze head floating around right in the center of it. So this might be super easy for you when you get into the nether, you'll come across one real quick. Uh, I did not get that lucky. I came in here and wanted to locate one so that we could have a slightly faster episode. Apparently I have some friends in here already, um, but I located one, I got the waypoint over there, and I made what I think is a semi-safe path to get over there. Um, I don't actually know, so we'll see, but we're just gonna run over here, and then I came all the way up here, and we have a fortress right over there with a blaze spawner right inside, so I'm hoping we can make it over there without dying. Um, but I'm actually probably going to hop off camera while I make the run. And then when we get there, I will cut back. Okay, guys. So we arrived at the blaze spawner, which is actually over there. But it appears we have a friend right over here already. So we're just going to pop out, right click on him. We get a living fireplace advancement. And you can see that we now upgraded it to a regular blaze burner. So now we should be good to go. So we can make the trek back to the house. Um, oh, no, this is not the side we want to go out of. I <laughs> forgot it's the other one. I almost ran right off into lava. Okay, right, but we'll cut when we are back at the base and ready to start setting this thing up. Okay, guys, so we are now back at the base. I did not die on the way back. I know, huge surprise. I actually probably would have put a clip in if I did die just to humor you guys, but now we are good to start setting this up. We've got everything we need, and the biggest pain is out of the way, and honestly, it wasn't too painful, so that's awesome. Now to set this up, we are going to need to start out by using the cog wheels. And the reason being, if you guys don't have the engineering goggles or you didn't see last episode, if you hold down shift, I can show you right here, you have a speed requirement for the mechanical mixer. This is something that not a ton of machines in Create have, but some do. And so you are going to actually have to make sure that the machine is running at that speed or higher to be able to function. Something that people always will mistake is that even if the mechanical mixer or other machines are hooked up to a lower speed, they will still spin. The mechanical mixer could be hooked up to one RPM and the graphic will still rotate. It simply won't actually go down and do the mixing. So I just want to get out ahead of it. That is something people commonly have questions on. Just because the mechanical mixer itself is rotating, if it doesn't extend down and actually complete the recipe, then you probably do not have the required speed. So we need to get this up to 30 RPM, and you can see the stress impact is four times the RPM, meaning for this, the minimum stress impact would be 120. Now, because the current system is using these water wheels, and these are running at their maximum speed of 16 RPM, we are going to be increasing it by a factor of two using the large cog wheel and the small cog wheel, meaning we're gonna end up at 32 RPM, meaning it's gonna take 128 stress units, the same as the mechanical press, to actually run the mechanical mixer, which is totally fine. Even if we ran it at its lowest required speed, we would save eight stress units, which really isn't that important. So we're gonna be going over how to actually increase the speed. Now, initially, we're just going to bring out from the mechanical press with a shaft to have some room to work with right over here. And we are going to take a gearbox and we are going to bring the rotation off the wall out one. And you know what? I'm actually gonna bring this over now that I think of it so that it looks better. I'm gonna bring it over two because we've got plenty of room over here to work with. So we'll put a torch up there. So now we have the rotation coming off the wall here one and it's going to be perfect for us to place down this large cogwheel. 
Now the way this works is when you place it down, obviously the large cog wheel is going to spin at the exact same speed the current system is spinning at. And so by attaching a small cog wheel to the side of this, we are going to be able to increase the speed by a factor of two. Now, if you don't know how cog wheels work, the general idea is that because the circumference of this is going to be twice the circumference of the small one, and I know it might not look like that, but that's basically how they treat it, uh, one rotation of the big one is going to be equivalent to two rotations of the small one, making it spin twice as fast. So if we come over here, we should be able to click this right on the corner right here, pretty easy to put down. And you can see we get the advancement shifting gears because this is how you are going to increase the speed early on of your systems. There are other ways that you can increase the speed later down the line that we can set up like the rotation speed controller, but this looks pretty cool and it's the easy way to do it early on. Now this is the same way that you would also downgrade the speed by a factor of two, but if you inverse it, so you start out with the rotation being supplied to the small cog wheel and then put the large cog wheel on later and pull the rotation out of that. So right now this is spinning at 32 RPM, which means that we have all the rotational speed that we need to actually get our mechanical mixer running. But if we place down the mechanical mixer somewhere like right over here, this one is a little bit different as you might be able to tell from the mechanical press. And that is because in Create, there's two different ways to input rotational power into machines. Some accept only one, some accept both. You just have to see which it is. And the mechanical mixer accepts the cog wheels as the source of rotational power. You can see right here, there is no axle input or shaft input or whatever you wanna call it for power like there is in the mechanical press. So we need to put a cog wheel down right next to this to have it spin the mechanical mixer. And because you can see it's like this, we're gonna to wanna to put down a vertical one so that it can connect and spin this, which means we need to move the rotational power from coming out of this cog wheel right here to vertically being inserted above the mechanical mixer right here. And the way we're gonna do this, it's honestly not super pretty, uh, but we're going to put down, I believe we need to switch these to a vertical one initially. So we're gonna put down a vertical right here gearbox and then we are going to put down I believe actually I think these are two more vertical ones up here we're going to put down another vertical gearbox up here another one right there and then finally we actually need to go grab one more small cog wheel I think we have extras right here yep there we go so we're going to do that and we can simply put it down right here now you can see that the mechanical mixer is in fact spinning and this one, if we look at it, shows the stress impact at 128 at its current speed, which means we were in fact successful with increasing the factor uh, by two for the rotational speed of our system. This is going at 32 RPM, which means it is sufficient for it to actually function, which is great because obviously that's exactly what we want. We want it to function. If not, it would be totally pointless. So now the basin is gonna go right here, directly below the mechanical mixer so that this whisk can lower down into it, spin around and mix stuff. Now this was actually how you set it up in Create 0.2 and you would simply throw things in there for your recipe and it would be all well and good. But Create 0.3 added a new mechanic which is heating the bottom of the basin. And the way you do that is by using the blaze burner. So what we're gonna do is come down right below this and I'm actually gonna try and make it look semi-presentable. So we're gonna go get a little bit of wood over here. We should have it already crafted. So we're gonna get some stairs and some regular wood like so. And we should be able to fill this in with wood, put down the blaze burner right here. And then we can put down a staircase right here. So now we can actually access this, and I think it looks a little bit nicer. We don't actually need to have it completely open in front of it. We can access it right through the oak stair, and this is where we are going to insert our fuel, and it will start burning so that it can heat up the bottom of the basin, and we can actually do the mixing. It needs to obviously heat it up so that you can mix the two ingots together. Otherwise, you would just have a whisk spin it around two solid ingots, and nothing would work. So the way that we fuel this up is using essentially anything you could put in a furnace. Eventually we will get to the mechanic of using blaze cakes, which are going to allow you to superheat it and certain recipes will require that. But to make brass, all you need is for it to be regularly heated. If we look this up right here, the recipe for brass in the mechanical mixer simply says it requires it to be heated and you will get out two brass for one zinc and one copper. 
and this is going to be using the blaze burner. So what we can go do is grab out some zinc, some copper from right in here, and then we can grab out some coal so that we can feed the blaze burner. Now an important thing for us to actually do right out the gate is I am going to, well I can show you guys, so if we toss this in here, uh, we get an advancement for base and operation. And then if we toss in the second piece, we are going to see that nothing happens, right? But the minute we click this coal in here, this is going to become a full blaze head like you would see on the actual monster itself. And this is going to go down and start working. So you can see there, the minute we do it, it comes down, we get a load of particle effects. But now we are able to come over here and if we right click, we're going to pull out the brass ingots. You don't need an empty hand or anything. You simply right click and you will get them out. Now what we can do is actually right click these on the basin and that's going to put the brass as a filter. Now the reason this is important is simply because there are a ton of different recipes that have overlapping things in Create and if you put in enough for a, sim a single recipe in here, this is going to fire off as long as it has the heated base if it needs it and you might run into situations where you put in half of the different materials for one recipe and it starts going before you get them all in. So if you were to put whatever item you specifically want on this and it's got the filter showing on every single side of it, it will prevent any recipe other than that one from being produced in the basin. So in this case, if we're using this pretty strictly for brass, we simply put brass here as the filter to make sure no other external recipes possibly get used up before we have all the stuff in for brass. That was a huge issue in Create 0.2 where you would accidentally produce things and weren't able to really stop it since they didn't have the filter option. And as you can see, this head will slowly burn out down here. I think we still have enough if we were to toss these in here through the top. Oh, no, it just went out. Right as I said that, it just went out. So if we feed this another one, you can see it goes down again and it will produce our brass for us. And then we just right click it and we get it out and we now have four. So that is how you're going to set up the mechanical mixer. And that's also how the blaze burner works. Unfortunately, the blaze burner does not have internal either storage or even a UI to look at, but the visual indications are pretty much the only way to know it's actually working. And eventually you can automate this using things like the deployer. It doesn't work with stuff like the hopper as far as I'm aware, you actually need to click on it, but obviously create offers something to do that called the deployer that we will be going over in the future, which is awesome because it will allow for some super cool automated builds. So I think that's gonna be it for today, guys. I do wanna to touch on a couple subjects. The first is I did up the UI scale. As you can see, you guys said you wanted it to go up one more. It was hard to see items and stuff like that. I assume a lot of you guys watched this on mobile, so that's probably why. I had no issue with that. If you guys have any problems, you think it's too big, too intrusive, feel free to post in the comments, but for now, we're giving this a go. And also, if you saw the community post that I made and I did a poll on it, I asked if you guys wanted to see shaders in this series. Now, I believe I should be able to run shaders without losing FPS. We should still be able to record at 60 FPS, 1080p for the videos. Um, I've gotten some warnings that down the line we might run into issues, so I'm a little hesitant to do it, but you guys asked for it, so I'm going to try my best to get it set up where I know that we have sufficient stability to record the entirety of the series with shaders if we're going to use that, but again, feel free to let me know in the comments if you guys have any opinions on that, and it'll be happening in the coming episodes if we end up doing it. Um, but if not, hopefully that's okay with you guys. I promise eventually we will do a series with shaders because it looks super nice, or at least we will do the tours at the end of the series with it to see how nice our base could potentially look if it was Minecraft 2.0. But again, that's it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode, and I will talk to you later.